الفائدة الرابعة Imam al-Ghazali gives the fourth reason why we should get married. He says here to devote yourself more to ibadah so that your heart and your body is not busy with too many things. And he refers here to houseworks and uh, gives the example of cooking, uh, cleaning, making up uh, beds, washing up, uh, and so on. Which is not necessarily a job of uh, a woman or a wife, but uh, practically, practically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala devoted men or made men devoted to seeking sustenance and working for that reason. And gave women that responsibility of handling houseworks. Not all human beings are uh, wealthy to provide uh, helpers or maids or servants or buy slaves as in old times. The bulk of human beings are not capable of doing so. And from a Sharia point of view, the wife has to help in serving the husband and the children and uh, doing the housework. It's uh, a kingdom that is uh, divided, sovereignty that is divided. The man seeks sustenance, the woman helps at home, and there is free time for both of them for ibadah, for ta'a, and for each one of them to fulfill their desires with each other. His work outside should not uh, overwhelm or be on the account of his time for ibadah, nor on the account of the time for his wife. The same also, the housework should not take much time on the account of ibadah, on the account of uh, the time the wife has to devote for her husband. You're not an angel to be protected from sins and uh, lower your gaze all the time and protect your chastity all the time. Although there are some girls who really guard their chastity and protect uh, themselves and maintain their prayer as much as possible. But you're doing things beyond your capacity and you're doing things Allah did not task you with. Why? It is the misunderstanding of the parents, unfortunately. The parents are causing now much of the trouble, I would say, in the society or the imbalance in the society. A lot of sisters come to me wherever I travel, in the UK, in South Africa, everywhere I go, make dua that I get married, make dua that I get married, make dua I get married. She is 25, 28, 30, 32. You should have got married at the age of 15, 16. Why did you have to wait until you finished your school? Why did you have to wait until you finished your college? I don't know, maybe, maybe scholars in this country or imams in this country don't mention these things. These are obvious things which uh, we teach and we say in Friday speeches, in schools, in uh, lectures, in dars, uh, in Damascus, and I believe all scholars uh, have the same opinion. Unless you are between uh, brackets following a progressive movement which progresses backward, <laughs> not uh, forward. So brothers and sisters, we need to reshape our minds with the given facts in the Sharia. Anyone has a degree amongst you here? You have a degree. Could you tell me what's your degree, please? Law. Okay, how many years did you study from first grade till now? 17 years. 17 years of studies until you got a degree of law. You work? You work. You're married? You're not married. Which is better for you? Getting married? Leaving your job? See? Better getting married and leaving her job. Make dua, inshallah. Our sisters get married and all our brothers get married, inshallah. 
I don't want 17 years of your studies, but seven years, seven years can make you a great Muslim teacher of Quran, Fiqh, Tafsir, Hadith. Seven years of studies. If you came to me from the age of six or seven and spend all these years in the study of the deen, 17 years could make you a great alim. A great alim. This is why, brothers, it is uh, very difficult in our modern time now for a young uh, girl to study and uh, get married and achieve everything. Most of you, I assume, who want to get married got degrees. And I would say you had a choice of two, between two, either university degree or getting married. You went for one, you missed the other. So no complaint, because having both of them is difficult. Most of you opted first, I have to finish my degree. You finished your degree, you missed the right age of getting married. Now at the age of 30, it's only a divorced man or a man with no children or a second wife. You get only second grade offers. Offers you wouldn't accept or difficult to swallow for you. But this is not your fault, I believe the fault of the parents. The same for you brothers. When we speak about sisters, we should speak about you. You won't get married until you finish all your studies because you want to have an income. Because you want to open your own home. And I said before in other courses, some of you might remember my words, if it was up to me, I would have uh, done marriage contracts between all single sisters and all single brothers now. All you need is a shelter. Shelter on a necessity level is a room, one single room. Every one of you has a single room in his home, right? With your parents. How many single brothers do you have here? Hands up, please. A lot. You live with your parents, right? Most of you. You have your own room? You have your own room, hands up, please. Okay. All you need is to change your single bed into a double bed. <laughs> That's it. Supposing there's not enough food, you share your food with your wife. If you don't have more income, not 10 pounds more even, you share your food with your wife. And you live under the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happily, having fulfilled your desire, protected your chastity. Stop looking at the faces of women here and there and thinking from now till four years, five years later, who would be the girl I'm going to get married to? What would she look like? Like this or like this or like this or like this? Stop doing this. We made it difficult for ourselves, unfortunately. It should be much easier. It should be much easier. I'm not exerting much authority here, although from a Sharia point of view, we have authority over the parents. Shaykhs have authority over the parents because they are supposed not to do anything which goes against the Sharia. Ah. So a Shaykh is supposed to know the rights of the parents and the rights of the children. And when he gives any command to his student or her student, suppose that command falls in the right place without transgression of one's authority over the other at all. A Shaykh who studied Fiqh, a Shaykh who knows the Maslaha and Mafsada and how to balance the benefit and the harm in the relationships between husbands, wives, children. This is why in the past some sheikhs used to tell their murids to divorce their wives or get married uh, with no choice. Here is a girl, you get married to her. No other choice. The parents uh, would agree with no problem. Did I tell you the story of Sheikh Krayim Rajih? He told me the story of Sheikh Hussein Khattab. He told the following story which I heard from Sheikh Karim Rajih, one of his students and colleagues. When he wanted to get married, his mother proposed for him his cousin. He took his Sheikh, Sheikh Hassan Habannaka, and the dignitaries of the family and around the Sheikh, 
after having assigned a certain time. So they went there. Sheikh Hassan Habannaka, having his student in front of him, Sheikh Hussein, looking at the host, the father of the girl, noticed the father of the girl wasn't happy. The father of the girl wasn't happy, was frowning and rude. So he inquired, shouldn't you be happy? Today your daughter is uh, being proposed. Why should I be happy? You're proposing to the young daughter. Who is going to propose to the older daughter of mine? Traditionally, people always prefer a younger girl. And in a family, when a younger daughter is married, the older is always avoided because people would assume there is something wrong with her. So people didn't uh, propose to her. They know what we don't know. So they always avoid her. Traditionally, this is against Islam. There's nothing in Islam that gives preference to one over the other, other than uh, the preferences given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. One year or two years do not make much difference. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the best example amongst us. His uh, best wife was 15 years older than him. And uh, his children all are from his best wife who was 15 years older than him, Sayyida Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. However, Shaykh Hassan Habannaka immediately said, there's no problem. We take instead the older daughter of yours. Where is all the preparation? Where is all the talks, the consultation? And the student is silent there. The student didn't say one single word. None of his relatives said one single word. And the Sheikh performed the marriage contract between his student, Sheikh Hussein Khattab, and the older daughter. And that was his wife. He lived with her for the rest of his life and he was thankful to his Sheikh for his choice. He said, Allah put all the good in this wife. He loved her. Tell me now, any student is ready for such a decision? I know that many girls are ready. <laughs> because parents wouldn't mind. But your parents would mind the Shaykh's choice because they want to propose to you someone from your tribe, from your village, from your family, someone not from a different race, someone from not a different color, someone uh, they know, they control, someone, I don't know, there are several reasons with uh, elderly mothers especially. Of course, it's always good to have the mother ch choosing for you because it's her wish after raising you for 25 years to pick up for you a good girl. But not using this uh, authority in a totalitarian way to deprive you from getting married uh, at all or depriving you from listening to the Shaykh when the Shaykh advises you of getting married. I'm putting it in a nice way, but I wish that if I come to see you next time, at least, at least half of you who are present now are married. I would be happy if I hear that 20 brothers, 30 brothers out of this gathering got married, 20, 30, 40 sisters got married out of this gathering. I would be very happy. Insha'Allah, and for that intention we make Fatiha and we take a break.